What's happening, webheads? It's your homeboy, D Casanova, back with another video. Last time, I only talked about making gloves. Well, in this video, I'm actually going to actually go over the process on making these Spider-Man gloves. Um, so, before I start rambling too much, let's dive in. So, for making the gloves, you really don't need a whole lot. It's very simple. So, obviously, you're going to need your paper pattern. That's a given. Uh, but if you don't have your pattern, you can just trace around your hand and forearm and add uh, space to accommodate seam allowance and other stuff. Uh, and the main material that we're going to be using, because it's the classic Spider-Man that we're doing, uh, you're going to need some red four-way stretch fabric. Um, but if you're going to be making these type of gloves for a different character, say somebody from the Fantastic Four, uh, maybe somebody from the DC Universe or whatever else, uh, you could change the color to your liking. But because we're doing Spider-Man, we're going to be using red four-way stretch spandex fabric. Uh, you will need some uh, pins. You will need a uh, needle and thread. And if you want, you can use a sewing machine. But uh, this time around, I'm actually going to be hand sewing uh, most of this. So, yeah, you will need a needle and thread. Uh, you will need a pair of scissors. Uh, you will need uh, some Sharpies or uh, markers to mark out the uh, space that you're going to be cutting around or cutting on. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. Uh, you may also need a uh, rotary blade. You might also need a ruler, but uh, an invisible grid guide will definitely uh, be a better option. Uh, mine's pretty uh, beat to hell, but it still serves the same purpose. So... Yeah, that's basically all you're really going to need. So, let's get to making these things. So, I already went ahead and laid out my fabric. Now, obviously, you're going to want to pick your placement and lay out your pattern. And then, as soon as you're happy with your placement, you are free to trace around your pattern. And uh, you probably won't be able to see my outline all that well. But, at the same time, hopefully you can get the idea of what I'm doing here. So, uh, as you can probably guess, there's the knuckle and the palm sections, and you're going to want to trace out two traces for each. Obviously, you can't forget to also do the same thing for the thumb. After you traced your pattern, you are free to cut it out. And you may also notice that I don't really uh, cut out the full extent, but here you'll also see some before and after pictures. So here's the before, and you can kind of see in the after how much you may want to trim away, uh, but you may want to do yours a bit differently than mine, and that's totally fine. I'm just trying to give you a general idea. And now we come to cutting out the four sheds. Now for my four sheds, I try to make mine no wider than three quarters of an inch. And as for how long, uh, that really varies depending on how long the distance between your index finger and your fourth finger are. But um, yeah, you're just going to want to cut a really long strip. And uh, if you have excess when you finish sewing from one fingertip to the other, you can trim that away. It's always better to cut out more than you need. You can always go forward, but you can't go back. So right here, I have the palm section, and I also have the thumb to one side. And we're going to attach the thumb first. So what I do first is I fold the thumb cutout of the palm section in half, and I give a real pinch at the middle point, and then I make a small mark on it with my ultra fine point sharpie. And then I take the thumb, and I fold one corner to the half point, so 
yeah, you can kind of picture what I'm doing here. I'm basically making points where the thumb and the thumb cutout of the palm section are supposed to meet up. Trust me, it just really helps. And as soon as you make those marks, you can grab your pins and you can start pinning the thumb onto the thumb cutout of the palm section. And once you're done pinning it together, you can go ahead and sew the thumb on. Now, as soon as you're done hand stitching it, you can go over it with a sewing machine and you can kind of guess it, that is what I did. After I finished hand sewing it, well, after I finished hand sewing most of the glove, I went over it with the sewing machine. You're just not going to see me use the sewing machine in this video because, well, there's plenty of footage of me using the sewing machine in some of my other videos, so, yeah, you get the idea. As soon as you're done sewing the thumb to the palm section, you can then bring in the forchette and you can start sewing that from the index finger all the way to the fourth finger and you're probably going to want to move to a more comfortable spot. Now, in case you haven't seen any of my prior videos, the forchette is that uh, piece that connects the halves of the palm section to the knuckle section. It starts at the tip of your index finger, goes down to the base between your index and middle finger, goes around the tip of your middle finger, down to the base between your middle and ring finger, goes around your ring finger to the base between your ring and fourth finger, and then it ends at the tip of your fourth finger. And that is definitely going to take a while. You know, while I was editing this, I realized that a lot of what I'm talking about and demonstrating here, you could probably piece together from my other videos. So while I'm sewing the foreshed on, do you mind if I take a moment to promote a friend of mine who is absolutely wonderful and deserves some love and hype? Of course you don't. Thanks for understanding. This is my friend Nicole, aka All of Hobbits. She is a Twitch streamer, and she's also on YouTube. She doesn't really upload a whole lot to her YouTube channel, but she does stream on Twitch quite frequently, and let me tell you, her streams are absolutely wonderful, they're full of fun, Did it up the car? And she is an absolutely wonderful and warm person. So if you happen to come across Olive Hobbits on Twitch, please give her a follow and tell her that D Casanova sent you. Thank you very much. Now back to the video. <laughs> yes, let's go. As soon as you reach the tip of the fourth finger with the foreshed, you can pretty much knot up the thread and cut off the excess thread, and you can also cut off the excess fabric that you don't need.
and as soon as you finish cutting off the excess, you can probably bring in the other side of the glove, and you can try pinning the forchette onto the fingers of that side. And also, a small tip, when you're pinning the forchette onto the other half of the glove, make sure the uh, finger bases and the fingertips match up. That way everything is nice and consistent and nothing is deformed or malformed or whatever you want to call it. Just make sure all edges match up, that way you don't get an awkward fit. That's all I'm trying to say. And once you have it pinned to your heart's liking and to your heart's content, you guessed it, go on and sew it together. So as you can see at this point, I have sewn the forehead to both the palm and the knuckle parts of the glove. And at this point we can pretty much pin the sides of the gloves together. And the way I like to do it is I like to make sure that the lines that I drew when I was tracing around the pattern match up. So where the pin sticks through the lines on the palm half, I want to make sure that it sticks through the lines on the knuckle half as well. It's just to make sure that both lines are nice and even and that we don't get any overlap. Especially when you use ultra fine point sharpies or the type of sharpies that I use because the type of fabric that I like to use for my gloves, the ink tends to bleed through a bit. So just something to watch out for. So as you can see here, I went over the lines with the sewing machine, and like I said, I don't really plan on showing the sewing machine in this video because, well, there's plenty of footage in previous videos where I have used a sewing machine. So with the sides sewn together, I am going to take the thumb piece and I'm going to sew the other half of the thumb piece to the knuckle part of the glove. And as soon as I have the knuckle and thumb parts sewn together, I'm going to sew from the tip of the index finger down and around the thumb. And as you can see here, I have the glove all sewn together. 
every seam is there, and you may also notice that I have a bit of excess fabric and some excess thread still hanging about. So I take off the glove and I'll grab my scissors, and at this point, with your glove, if you have excess as well, you can cut away the excess fabric and the excess threads, and also make sure that when you're cutting the excess, that you're not cutting into the seams that are holding the glove together. If you have seams that are outside of the threads that are holding the glove together, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you cut enough to where the glove fits, well, like a glove. I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. And here you go. I have all the excess cut away, or at least as much excess as I could cut away just to be on the safe side. And now I am turning my glove inside out. And now I'm putting it on my right hand. When it's inside out and it fits on your left hand perfectly, that's a sign that when you turn it right side out, it's meant for your right hand. And you can pretty much do the same thing for the other glove. Just make sure that when it's inside out, it fits over your right hand. That way when you turn it right side out, it fits on your left hand. And as you can see, when it's right side out and on my right hand, it more or less fits like a glove should. And let me tell you, it feels so good to have a form-fitting glove that works. And again, you can use this method for a variety of characters, not just Spider-Man. And feel free to give yourself a thumbs up for doing a good job. You know, while I was editing this video, it occurred to me that instead of boring you with the process of making the left hand glove or just showing the same old footage over and over again, instead, how about I promote a mutual friend of mine and all of Hobbits who happens to be left handed herself? Yeah, let's do that. This left-handed mutual friend between me and all of Hobbits that I'm talking about is, of course, Hannah, aka Copy Slay. And just look at her awesome little dance. I mean, it's so simple, but less is more. And let me tell you, her content is very chill, very relaxing, and it's always good to tune into her streams, especially when you've had a bad night and you want to start the new day off with a great morning. She is on Twitch and on YouTube, I will have her links down in the video description. She has the vibes that one could potentially use to create a good day and maybe pass that joy onto other people. Hannah is absolutely awesome. Go tune in to her Twitch and YouTube channels and trust me, her content is a lot better than a bunch of my videos and let's be honest, given the fact that I'm recycling a lot of my old videos into this one, uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that I've pretty much been creating content that is completely and utterly cringe. Cringe? <laughs> You're calling this cringe? You're right. So that's pretty much gonna be about it for uh, this video. Um, I'm sorry that I only showed you the one glove, but... Basically, you just repeat the same thing on the other side, except the pieces are pretty much reversed. It's basically the same concept for both sides. Uh, yeah. Pretty much what you do on one side, you duplicate it for the other. So, And when you're done, you should have two. So, yeah. That's about it for this video. Um, I hope this was uh, helpful to you in some way. Uh, if you want more information about gloves or methods of making gloves, you can check out my previous video on glove sewing techniques. And um, also, before I forget, again, 
please follow all of Hobbit and Coffee Slay on their Twitch profiles, and I will also have their YouTube links down in the description as well. Uh, and I think that's going to be about it. I've been your host, D. Casanova. Thank you for tuning in and watching this video, and I hope to see you folks in the next one. Goodbye!